Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I am Mike B and today we're gonna to be taking a look at something that was very new to me and even Devin K had kind of an interesting time identifying it. I've only seen one other post that's anywhere related to this on the internet and it was on US Military Forum a few years ago. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what you're looking at is exactly what I saw when I opened up the box of a bunch of flak jackets from Austria. Now these were supposed to be the Austrian flak jackets, but as you can see, right away, they're actually a U.S. Pazgit vest, but they're all of drab. Well, okay, it must be Canadian then. Well, that's what I thought too, and that's what Devin thought until I sent him pictures. And this is a clip from his video of what a Canadian Pazgit actually looks like. And uh, so take a look at this picture, and then take a look at this vest. So you can see out, uh, right away that the Canadian vests, the Pazgits that were made in the U.S. for Canada have a square pocket that sits up higher. They don't have the U.S. style pockets. And they've also got an epaulet right here for their rank slides. Well, this didn't have that. Um, so Devin was looking at it like, well, maybe it's an early contract, but even the, the test runs were, you know, they were all of drab, but it's really hard to find those. And, you know, when we thought it was a Navy one, most of those were gray, even though they had a few of these. And why the hell would it have come from Austria then? I'll just break this open and show you the tag really quick. So it's definitely a U.S. Pazgit vest, right? And uh, you can see that's that's kind of uh, markered out. All three of them have this same thing markered out, but uh, this one's the most visible. So you can see right there, it says 84C. So that would be the first year of production of these things. And it's made by U.S. Small Business... Or, yeah, it looks like Small Business Admin Administration or whatever. So that's a very interesting one. And I saw that... Somebody else, size medium, by the way, you saw the tag and all that stuff. Um, somebody else posted this, the aforementioned post in the U.S. Military Forum. And it was the same exact size, same exact manufacturer, same exact color, same exact year, contract number, etc., etc. He actually removed the, the Sharpie from the vest and it showed the same exact marking. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to be selling this and two more just like it on my site, and by the time you're watching this video, they'll probably be long gone to some really hardcore collectors. Unfortunately, I don't collect body armor besides helmets, so I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, sell these and they'll go to a good home if somebody appreciates them. Now, I've never seen a Pazgit that's just all of drab before, never. Um, some people say that, you know, it might be an Israeli contract. Nope, they, uh, I looked at every single picture that I could and 99.9% .9 that I could find that I could positively identify a Pazgit, they were wearing the Woodland variant. Uh, the Woodland variant came about and was pretty much standard issue for all US forces and most of the uh, exports that we uh, actually sent over were indeed Woodland. Now, okay, get to the point you're saying, and yeah, I know, this is like what I was thinking. These are all the, the processes that you have to go through when you're uh, looking at something that you have no idea about. And so I got in contact with Devin K, which is, that's what the Canadian Pazgit still frame shot was from his video. And he was kind of perplexed as well. And then he was like, oh, wait a second. You know what that probably is or was, is in the 1980s, the U.S. apparently made some of these vests that were for, uh, I forgot he called them like um, uh, uh, correspondent or civilian, or there was a word he used. I don't know. He'll probably comment with that because I'm an idiot and forgot. Anyway, it was um, like a, basically a civilian vest. So with news reporters, VIPs, things like that, when they're in a combat zone, specifically um, these were widely used in the Balkans in the 90s with the, a lot of the reporting that was going on and a lot of the people that they were trying to transport around that ran the risk of getting ambushed. Um, they would issue them these all drab vests to, I guess, distinguish them from military personnel. Not to mention that they weren't wearing any, you know, helmet covers or anything like that. They were trying to make sure that they knew that they were civilians. So this was probably one of those vests. We don't know for sure. This is what we surmise. So this is not a fact. And if you know anything about this, please comment. Don't just try and guess like we do because we already did that and this is what we came up with. But if you know definitively what exactly this is and the history behind it, please let us know and hopefully you can back it up with some good documentation because it's really cool. It's new to me. Um, and then, yeah, so that would make sense because Austria did actually send personnel to assist in the UN operations that were taking place in the Balkans. And even if they weren't directly participating in combat, a lot of these vests probably got issued out. And then after they were um, put back in or brought back to Austria, they were put into use by the Bundesheer because they were very similar to the, the Austrian flak vests. 
And why not? If they're, if they're going to work the same as your flak vests and you've got them in your inventory, why not use them? And that's probably what happened with this vest and the other two that I'll be listing is that it was made initially for civilian use or possibly for Navy use in the U.S., exported as such um, for civilian use and con uh, contractors, you name it. Uh, it's just basically civilians, not military personnel in a combat zone. And then was shipped back to Austria and then subsequently used for however long or put in a storage room, who knows, by the Bundesheer. Uh, that's the best guess we have. And it's a very interesting thing because, yeah, you look at this, it's, it's definitely not Canadian because, again, we went through those features and you can see. It's, it's literally a U.S. Pazgit that's all of drab. And it was made this way. You can tell by the, the contract date, 1984. So it's either a really early variant that they only made, I don't know, a couple, a handful of and decided to export them after they decided to, on the M81 Woodland. Or it was like we said for the, like Devin said rather, but I'm saying it now, is for civilians or non-military personnel. No idea. Still a really cool piece. Here, I'll flip it around because I doubt I'll ever be able to get any of these again. Um, because once these sell, the collectors are going to grab them and <laughs> they're going to be, they're going to be sitting there in their collection, probably indefinitely. So, um, yeah, those, if you're watching this and it's the day it's posting, which is when it was going to be December 5th, uh, they should be up on the site in the morning. I'll try to get them up. If you're watching this anywhere past that, these will probably be sold out. So just enjoy the video. And again, if you know anything about this, these, these particular ones came from Austria. So they, they like were confirmed that they were in Austria at one point. Now, how they got there, I just I just laid out the best the best guess we've got. So, your guess is as good as ours. Um, again, I would really like to know more about this and see how many of these there are. I have never seen them before, and I don't think I will again in real life. But anyway, so yeah, I just figured I'd make a cool little gear video because uh, Devin K did the one on the Canadian Pazgit. And I was like, well, if these are Canadian, I don't really need to do a video because he already did that, but it's definitely not. So that's why you're getting this. Anyway, these don't have the instruction booklets. Uh, they're, they're sanitized, so they were definitely used at some point. They're not in bad shape, as you can see, but um, definitely used. So there we go. The olive, olive drab Pazgit vest from 1984, 1984 contracts. So more than likely it was made in 1983 or early 1984. All right, that's all I've got. I appreciate you watching, everybody. Um, this is kind of a hybrid Mike's Military Inventory slash gear video. Um, although, again, these are probably going to sell really quick. It's really interesting to do a review on this, and I'm making the video more for a reference for the future so we can exchange some information and we can all learn together about some cool stuff like this. So thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. It's a great way to fund the channel. I do fund the channel like 99% out of pocket until recently. And crowdfunding has really been helping. I've got some really cool stuff lined up, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks to all my Patreon supporters currently. You guys are awesome, and it's been a really cool time. I'm, I feel a little bit better actually asking you guys what you want me to spend your donations on and your support money on. And then you guys get some say in it to make the channel a little bit better and get you guys some cool content. So consider becoming a supporter on there. Dollar a month, 12 bucks a year. It's about two or three cups of uh, hipster coffee, depending on where you live. And uh, yeah, it helps the channel grow. And stuff like this doesn't come by very often. I just I literally, I ordered a bunch of Austrian vests, Austrian flak vests, which are almost sold out. And these three were in there. And I was like, huh, three of these things aren't like the others. And so then, yeah, it began that whole thing. So once in a while, some interesting stuff happens that I don't even know about. So there are, there are gaps in my knowledge for sure. But thanks for watching, everybody. And hopefully, again, if you know anything about this for sure and you can back it up with evidence, please comment. And we'll see you on the next video.